After 17 years of cruising with Royal Caribbean, I finally hit pinnacle status, which is the highest tier of Royal Caribbean's customer loyalty program. And you know what? It meant a lot more to me than I thought it would. Let's talk about why up next. Everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. I didn't have a goal when I first started cruising to reach Pinnacle at any point. It honestly, it didn't really matter in the sense that I wasn't trying to game the system in order to cruise more just to get to Pinnacle status. But the more it became apparent that I would reach it, it was actually surprising that I would get it sooner than I thought I would. On a cruise I took in June on Navigator of the Seas, I hit lucky number 700, which brought me from Diamond Plus to Pinnacle status. And I think most cruisers won't get close to 700 points in order to reach Pinnacle themselves, but if they do, there are a slew of amenities and benefits along with a distinct culture that really struck me. And you know what? After getting to this point, it's kind of interesting to think about what being at the top tier really means. Now, I was never one to cruise in order to gain a higher status. Unlike the airline industry, the place is a great deal of emphasis on attaining status, primarily driven by business travelers. Some of the best benefits for cruisers are when you get to the upper middle tiers. However, Pinnacle status shares some similarities with the airline programs in terms of offering the best perks at the very top. I got into cruising because I liked the idea of visiting different ports and the benefits I received along the way just sweetened the experience. I remember thinking how lucrative it was to get platinum status and be eligible for a balcony discount. Then I thought when I became diamond members and getting complimentary drinks every day of the cruise was just the best I could ever hope for. Now it's a long way from Diamond Plus at 175 points to the 700 point threshold for Pinnacle. Of course, as you all know, you earn one point per night on a cruise, two points if you're staying in a suite per night on a cruise, and if you're staying solo in a suite, then you get three points per night on a cruise. So there are two reasons why I think I really got faster to Pinnacle than I ever thought was possible. Number one, I live in Florida, and that means I have access to year-round cruises without having to worry about airfare nearly as much as other people who live in other states. Florida is the capital of the cruising world because of all the cruise ships based here and being able to drive to a cruise port, especially when there's a deal out there, really enables far more cruising than living anywhere else. I live in the Orlando area and that puts four different Royal Caribbean home ports less than a four hour drive away. Two of them are only an hour away. Compounding my Florida residency is of course the fact that I do work full time on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Being able to quote unquote cruise for a living meant I started going on many more cruises than I ever did when I had a day job. Similar to how retirees have more time to cruise, I didn't have to balance vacation time needs once I started covering cruising as a full-time gig. Of course, having a wife and two school-age kids means I'm not sailing every week by any means. It's a struggle to balance the school schedule, especially considering how much I love going on cruises with my kids and taking them on board. And in case you're thinking I got the cruise for free from various media cruise giveaways from Royal Caribbean, there are very few cruises given to me, maybe twice a year at the most. And most importantly, I receive zero, zero Crown and Anchor Society points for media sailings. But if there's one factor that got me to pinnacle status faster than living in Florida or even working on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, it was the double points promo. From 2020 through the end of 2022, Royal Caribbean offered double the normal amount of loyalty points for cruises booked during the cruise industry shutdown. It was a strategy by the cruise line to spur new bookings at a time in which many people were really hesitant to give money to cruise lines because they weren't sure that the sailings were actually gonna happen or even that the company would survive. Going on a week-long cruise and getting 28 points per sailing, that's of course sailing in a suite or solo multiplied by two, moves you up to the ladder a heck of a lot faster. Everyone in Crown and Anchor Society benefited from the double points promo and it certainly accelerated my points trajectory. As I said earlier, when I got to diamond status, which is 175 points, I thought I had reached the mountaintop of Royal Caribbean status for what was realistic for me. And I was content being there because I really didn't grasp the value of getting to Pinnacle. The more you cruise, the more friends you'll make along the way. And I've gotten to know many wonderful people that were already Pinnacle members or turned Pinnacle later on. Everyone has a story how they attained what seemed like the impossible, 700 points. In speaking with them and observing other cruisers, it's clear that being a pinnacle is more than just a different color on your set sail pass or an extra free drink per day. Royal Caribbean itself places a ton of emphasis on its top tier cruisers. In short, they really want other cruisers and crew members to know that someone is pinnacle compared to any other crown and anchor status. Pinnacles get gold sea pass cards, are able to check in with the sweet guests, get mentioned at top tier events on board, and receive a gold lapel name tag to wear around the ship. 
Now, I'm going to be honest with all of you, I did get the gold lapel pin, but I personally don't care for the badge, something I want to wear, but it's still incredible how much emphasis the Pinnacle program gets from the company. I think any customer wants to feel valued, whether at a sandwich shop, car dealership, or on a cruise ship. Certainly, most companies talk about how much they love their customers, but I really do think that Royal Caribbean backs up with its actions when we talk about the Pinnacle Club. In my observations, it seems like Pinnacles get a lot of officers on board speaking to them, not only to get to know these people, but also take care of their concerns. I don't want to make it seem like Pinnacles get everything they want and the cruise line is perfect in their handling, but Pinnacles get more attention than any other tier. And I can appreciate that Royal Caribbean cares beyond form letters and freebies. After all, when you look at a lot of the ways other companies cater to new customers versus existing, it's kind of refreshing to see that the people at the very top of those loyalty tiers really do mean a lot. In case you're wondering what extras you get if you do reach Pinnacle status, here's what you basically get from Royal Caribbean. Flexible arrival times, personalized lapel pin, Pinnacle Club C-Pass card with exclusive privileges, daily breakfast at a specialty restaurant, exclusive nightly Pinnacle Club event, a free seven-night balcony stateroom cruise for 700 and 1,050 cruise points, a free cruise certificate in a junior suite for a seven-night cruise for 1,400 and for every 350 cruise points thereafter, and a bigger discount on balcony and suite accommodations compared to being a Diamond Plus member. The free cruises for continuing past 700 points is a really nice option that adds tremendous amount of values. That way, there is incentive to keep cruising even after 700. After hitting Pinnacle Club O, you'll get an additional free cruise that accumulates every 350 points. That means you'll get an initial cruise that's for free after hitting 700 points and then 1050, 1400, 1750, etc. The free cruise is for two people, but you can bring a third and fourth guest just to pay their fares. The first two cruises are in a balcony cab, and after that, you qualify for a junior suite. If you don't want to sell to the Caribbean, you can ask for a cruise credit towards an itinerary somewhere else. Royal Caribbean will give you $2,400 towards the purchase of a cruise at 700 and 1,050 points, and $3,200 towards the purchase of a cruise at 1,400 points and above. If my math is right, it took me about 70 cruises to hit pinnacle status, and if you're nowhere near that number, it's okay, actually. It really doesn't matter all that much. As I said earlier, I didn't get into cruising for the benefits. It's just a nice added benefit to doing so. But whether you're at gold status or platinum or diamond, the bottom line is there are some really good benefits you should still be taking advantage of when you go on a cruise. Certainly, when you get to diamond status, you get a free day of internet, two free days of diamond plus. That is huge right there because internet is not cheap. And on a three or four night cruise, you can really do some damage with those free internet days. Speaking of diamond benefits, also the BOGO especially dining package that you get is really nice. When you reach Diamond Plus and Pinnacle, you receive a BOGO deal to buy any specialty restaurant on the first or second night of the cruise and then receive complimentary dining for the second guest. Then there's the discount on balcony stairs, which begins at platinum status. And I gotta tell you, this is always a nice added benefit to it because whenever I'm pricing a cruise, I usually just go to the website, talk to my travel agent, right? And we kind of price it out there. And then we apply those discounts. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. It really is incredible because I can't tell you how much money I've saved over the years being able to get a little bit of a discount on that balcony room. Looking back at some of the cruises from last year, there was $150 on a four night sailing and a $326 discount on a 12 night cruise as well. It really does add up. Another benefit at Platinum that really makes a difference are the exclusive events because the top tier events that are held during the cruise offers free champagne and other complimentary alcoholic drinks. And it's a great way also for Royal Caribbean to thank its customers. I know it seems cheesy in some senses, but honestly, I appreciate that they recognize Platinum members and above and invite them to a special event just for them. And the fact that you get free drinks too, that was huge. All members of Crown and Anchor Society also receive some nice status matching with other cruise lines and travel companies. Royal Caribbean Crown and Anchor members can receive reciprocity benefits with sister brand Celebrity Cruises. Those with the status of Platinum or above will receive status match when sailing on Celebrity. In fact, I just applied my status. I've never sailed on Celebrity to my first cruise in November, and I already have now almost one of their top tiers, which is really incredible because I'll be getting elite level benefits, which includes free drinks, discounted internet, free laundry, and more. Never sailed on Celebrity, already at the top of the level right there. There are other companies that will provide some level of reciprocity with your Crown and Anchor status as well. Most notable, your Crown and Anchor status will be matched at MGM Rewards, Emerald and above, get gold status at MGM, while lower teals also receive some status perks. All you have to do is visit an MGM rewards desk at any MGM rewards destination to validate your status. And finally, Crown and Anchor members also receive Hertz Gold Plus rewards points as well. For the purposes of this video, I followed the instructions through Royal Caribbean's website, entered the info on Hertz's website to sign up, and the link from Royal Caribbean pre-populated a few fields during the sign-up process. 
Hertz Gold Rewards includes Skip the Counter and E-Return Access, which can save you time at the airport. You'll also earn points with rentals and receive ultimate choice benefits. Of course, no matter what tier you're at, when you get on board your ship, you're going to get a letter in your stateroom listing all the onboard benefits that Royal Caribbean gives you at that status. And whether it's a BOGO wine or beer, or perhaps a discount on laundry, it's nice to get those. And as you move up the tiers, the discount and the availability of promos significantly increases. In fact, I really love the idea when you get to Diamond Plus, you get complimentary and discounted laundry and free photos during your cruise. It all adds up. Not one of them is like, wow, that's amazing. But together, combined, it really does make a difference. So in my hitting pinnacle status here at Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society, it just got me thinking about why it matters to try to maybe hit those tiers. I wouldn't necessarily cruise specifically for them, but it does add up. And as one of our writers here at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com likes to say, cruising is what you make of it. And the Crown and Anchor Society is very much the same way. I may not take advantage of every single benefit given to me, but there are a few that I'm very much looking forward to, such as priority embarkation and complimentary internet access as pinnacle. But for everybody watching this video, if you're looking forward to your next cruise, be sure to double down on those benefits. They are free, but it's up to you to remember to use them. And if you do it smartly, it might be a great way to get extra value out of your cruise experience out there. And on top of all that, I just hope by sharing my experience, it'll provide you with some context, for perhaps making it to Pinnacle as well someday and what Crown and Anchor Society offers its most loyal cruisers. Let me know in the comments below, what is your top most favorite benefit for being a Crown and Anchor Society member. And while you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.